Hi, it's Michael here from Digital Homebrew and today I'm upgrading my temperature controller from my three vessel homebrewing rig. This is the temperature controller uh, that I've been using for the last year or two and I'm going to put in an STC 1000 uh, controller in place of the one that's in there currently. I've got a heater power control and a pump power control and this is my temperature controller here. Uh, on the side I've got a little DC jack, this is where I plug my probe in. And on the back, I've got a heating outlet, a pump outlet, and uh, the power inlet, of course, that's fused. And I've got a 9 volt outlet here, and this runs to my scale that I'm using at the moment. I'm not sure if I'll keep using the scale, but I will use this outlet probably for my hot liquid ton stirrer that I'm working on at the moment as well. I just want to show you the reason why I'm replacing my old mash temperature controller. Uh, this is it here, I've taken it out of its box and I've just hooked it up to some low voltage power here so it's safe for me to play with without playing with mains voltages and instead of a temperature probe in the back I've got this little potentiometer so I can simulate the changing temperature as it runs. Now if I go into the menu setting on this one by holding the set button there are a few things that are wrong with this. Uh, this calibration, this one, when I set the temperature it's in steps of one degree Celsius, which is not really ideal for when I'm mashing. Uh, I'd like to have a little bit better control over that. Even if it's not perfectly accurate, I'd like to be more precise about that. I'll just go into the menu system again. And the other trouble was, if I go to D, this is the delta here. And this is the temperature difference about how it operates. The lowest I can go is one. I can't go to zero or 0.3, I think the STC 1000 can go to. There's no decimal points here. And so if I leave that menu system, uh, I'll just set, I'm set to 64 degrees at the moment. So say that was my mash temperature. And we can see uh, this work light up the top is on, which means that it's trying to heat up to its 64 degrees set point. Okay, so I'll just put that down and alter my potentiometer here to try and get up to 64. It's really, really picky, but see if I can get there. Oh, there we go. So it's on now because we're, uh, it's turned off now, I mean, because we're above 64 and it knows we don't need to heat anymore, obviously. The trouble is now when your mash cools down. So I'm using a rim system and this is controlling the temperature of my hot liquor ton. If I turn that down very gradually. See, I'm down to 63.3 and it's still hasn't come back on yet. So I'm 0.7 of a degree too cold. And it won't be until I get that full delta of one degree before it actually turns on the heater again. Two, and it's just gonna jump. There we go, 62.7. And now it's back on again. So that's the reason I'm not too happy with this old one over a modern STC 1000. And that's the reason I'm gonna be replacing it in this one because I just want that more accurate control while I'm mashing. This is the STC 1000 that I'll be installing. They're about $20 on eBay. And this particular one I ordered because I wanted to see if I could upgrade the firmware on it with the STC 1000 Plus firmware that's been developed in the American forums. And unfortunately, although I confirmed with them, I showed them photos of the correct one inside and how it should look and it had to have the PIC microcontroller, they sent out the wrong one. So I've opened this one up and checked inside and it's just the standard STC 1000 that can't be reprogrammed. Okay, so I'll open up my existing controller. And here you can see what's inside. Don't copy this, I'm not an electrician, but this is the setup I've got at the moment. It's just a AC to DC converter here. That's what I had laying around to get my nine volts out. And uh, just a wired in SCC here for the temperature control. Uh, the probe runs across there. And also this is the switch for the, for the pump as well running out the back. Just taking this apart, you've got to slide off these little orange fellas, which can be a bit tricky. Okay, so now I've got it off. I can flip this guy over and we can start working out how compatible these are. So we've got heating and cooling over here and this one's completely different because he's got sensor over here, power in the middle and the heater relay on that side. So it's kind of reversed, but that's going to be okay because most of these wires were flipped around anyway. I'll start with the easy ones. That's the sensor. He's non-polarized, I believe. 
So we can connect up these wires in any which way. Just put them into the sensor one. Sensor here. Next up is our heater wires. She's switching the active on the heater. So into there. And this is the active end coming from our overriding power switch. Okay, so there we go. Heat is in there and good okay and then the power now this is just low current that supplies the controller with power to run its display and there's a little transformer in there that runs all the digital circuitry okay in he goes great that's everything now uh, you can see we've got our power in there we've got our sensor hooked up we've got our heating here and we're not bothering with a fridge so there's there's no cooling for the hot liquor ton and I'm going to put him in upside down again because that's the way this mounts into my system. So these are the little clips on the side that um, hold it in. They've got little spring loady bits here so they keep it really flush against the front panel. Slide them on. Okay, so now I've got both of these clips on nicely. It's very snugly fitted there. Uh, I'm just going to put on some cable ties now because I really want to separate it's an ant there. I really want to separate these low voltage wires away from the high voltage wires as much as possible just to keep that extra degree of separation there. Great, I'm pretty happy with that now. I'm, that's about I'll keep him under there, but that's about as good as I can get the separation in this enclosure. So all happy with everything. Lid goes back on. And that concludes the upgrade. I'll just peel off this. Alrighty, looking good. And this video wouldn't be complete if I didn't show you a demonstration of what the new temperature controller can do and how it's so much better than the old one. Uh, this is the SEC 1000 that I've just installed. If I hold the set button, okay, function one, this is setting the temperature. And now I can actually set it in increments of 0.1 of a degree, which is gonna be great for mashing, whereas my old one you had to set in full degree increments. Okay, and I'll get out of that menu. The other thing is menu number two, and this is important. This one, 0.3, uh, it starts off at 0.5 degrees, but this is the delta, uh, the amount of temperature change before it cycles the heater on and off. So I set that all the way down to 0.3, which is, uh, three times better than the old one. The other one had a delta of about a whole degree that it had to drop below my set point before it would turn on the heater. So the new firmware is so much better than my old temperature controller. And there we go, that's, that's that one. So I can't wait to brew with it. Maybe next weekend I'll get a chance to test it out.